Want to get better at World of Tanks? I'm your Watt Coach, 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. All right, on today's episode, we are joining our friend, the Chief, on Live Oaks. Let's get into this one. All right, first, let's take a look at the team lineup. On the red side, this is really important for this map. We've got two squares that are going to put a lot of pressure on us. Then we also have two EBRs, which may or may not YOLO our two squares. Followed by that, we are pretty light on heavies. There's only four of them, and there's quite a lot of mediums. Some of them are going to act as tank destroyers in this lineup. All right, let's take a look at the mini map. OK, so given what we know of the team lineup, where would I head on this? So. You can play the city, you could play the south, or you can kind of wait to see what happens. So normally what I would do in a vehicle like this that's more designed for hull down play, I would usually head down here, play the south. If my team wants to take this area, I would join them in there or head down this area. However, there are two big T-92 artillery pieces on the enemy team meaning that if we do make the play in the south, be prepared for a lot of artillery fire. Given that information that they do have two Leos and that Foch B, what I would probably end up doing is actually starting here on the initial play, act as a tank destroyer looking this way, supporting an EBR that may be doing this run, which is a popular EBR run. If they spot anything over here, maybe I can get one or two shots of non-returnable damage very early on, Make sure you knock down that big tree that's sitting right there. So those are probably my two big plays at the start of this match. Let's see how it goes. So guys, if you'd like to have your replay featured on Coach's Corner, down in the description will be a link to my Discord channel. There you'll see a chat channel called Coach's Corner, and you can submit your replays to me there. Just also another friendly reminder, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening. So if you have more questions after this, or you'd like this kind of live commentary while I'm playing my own account, feel free to drop on there. All right, looks like we are going to go to the south, or we're going to make this passing play in the middle. Are we going to be on the left side of the tracks? Maybe not. That was kind of some weird pathing. Y you know what? That's interesting. Is it is it faster to do this than it is to do this? I honestly don't know. I may have to uh, get into a training room and figure out which of those movements is faster. That's really interesting. So we do see that the Leo did go over here. The EBR is doing that traditional run. So if he were to spot something up here, only the Leo would get damage. If I were there, I might be able to get another shot of damage, but that's okay. We've made the commitment to go to the south here, so we are going to see how we can do down in this area. The EBR trying to get away. And we would have hit him if that pesky piece of dirt wasn't in the way. Um, that's okay. You see the Progetto took a shot. The, our EBR is pretty low on health, which is really unfortunate. He should be trying to get out. Our EBR should be trying to leave right now. We took a shot. They had three fast tanks commit into the dip. Our EBR is toast. There's no way he's getting out at this point. And he goes down early. Ooh. So I would have say what would have been smarter here, because you were still actually stunned basically at the moment that you took that shot. I would have moved my cursor to right about here, waited for the stun to wear off, and by the time the object 140 is right in front of my cursor is when I would have taken that shot. You might have been able to get a better shot of damage here instead of rushing that shot too early. P62 moving around to the bottom area there. Ooh, we dodged an arty shell. That's good. That's another 40 seconds we don't have to worry about from at least one of the two. Get a shot there. Oh yes, excellent. So what I would say is I see you're not zooming in very far, and that's probably because of the way that you have your settings. Um, you may want to enable this. I usually leave it disabled, but for whatever reason, you're not zooming in as far as you can. So maybe there's another setting apart from here, but you may want to look into um, being able to zoom in a little closer. 
even though your dispersion doesn't get any better, um, being able to find point where you're trying to hit your shot, you might end up uh, hitting a, a few more shells. So one thing you want to be in this area is cognizant of where you are relative to your teammates. You've got a TVP here, T57 here, and a T62A here. If you're in artillery, where are you going to be aiming? Well, if you're in the uh, in the artillery view, your aiming reticle is going to look something like this. This is exactly where I would be aiming. Um, it might be like maybe a little bit more like this, depending on if they are here or here. But this is the key area that I would be aiming to shoot. Whenever you're not actively getting a shot or on reload like you are right now, what you want to be doing is actively getting away from your teammates. The more spread out you can be, the less effective their artillery will be. So always, whenever you're reloading, not in a direct get engagement, back off from your teammates so that there's more space between you so that when artillery does land a shell, if you get hit, then your allies won't take a bunch of damage, or if your allies get hit, then you won't take a bunch of damage. Moving around here. Wow, that Leo is moving quick. He's looking to get a shot on that T-62A. He's going to take a hit from the 430. 430 just fired. If you can scoot on up here, you might be able to get a shot in. Well, that T-62A is going down. Okay, this is interesting. So your team has decided to make pressure, it looks like. I don't know how many shots are in your T-57 Heavy, but you want to be on this ridge looking for shots at these guys. Because right now, with these guys poking in this way, they're not looking up this way, okay? This train gives you some amount of protection from the tank destroyers that are sitting, look at the minimap right here, okay? They won't have shots on you. Come up here, and anytime you see one of them not looking this way, take a shot. Or if you see one of them fire, roll up and take a shot or you can look for a snap on the EBR. Either way, you wanna make sure that you're getting pressure from this direction while your team is maintaining their attention from the other direction. Yeah, I would definitely say it's safe enough to poke up and over. Even if they get a shot into you, then that invites your teammates from the other side to move in and get a little bit more damage. And you're separated enough from your allies that I don't think artillery would be targeting you. And it's important that we kill these vehicles quickly, because if we look on the other side of the map, you've got a T-123 in the back, and you've got two heavies in this area, and they have a lot of tanks here, and they still have two active EBRs. One was last spotted here, one was last spotted here, which means that the middle of this map is going to be wide open to EBR spotting in a very short amount of time. What you want to do in this scenario is kill these tanks very, very quickly and start heading back to base or start pushing through aggressively. The last thing you want to do is be wasting time in this area. See, there's that EBR taking up the middle of the map. So you're angling to get a little bit more gun depression. That's fine. That's good. What you want to be aware of is when you're in this gap here, you're actually exposed to fire. So this is a really popular sniping position is next to this uh, building here because you get hard cover from the building and soft cover from the bushes and they can overwatch through this little gap here. So if you're in this area, you want to make sure that the bridge is in between you and them or this pillar is in between you and them or you're far enough to the right that they won't have shots on you. Which you're actively doing in this position right now. That was a good kill shot there. The 277 is still up. I don't think I'd be poking on him because you're proxied by the 277 and exposed to the Leo. Okay, so the EBR over here hasn't been spotted in a while. We know this one is deep. My guess is, since this flank has fallen, this EBR has moved over here, which means that you're in danger of these EBRs coming back in behind you guys or coming up and killing Artie, possibly getting side shots on these uh, heavies over here. Your 277 is almost dead. So we need to have a, uh, a pretty deep discussion right now. So let's talk about what we're seeing, okay? Guys, listen, tab back into your, your web browser, okay? I need you to listen. Every time you win a flank, you need to look at the minimap. All right, I'm going to say it again. Every time you win a flank, you need to look at the minimap, okay? This is why you need to make a choice. You have two choices here. You can keep pushing the flank that you've won, or you can fall back and defend base. And you have to make the choice 
that's best for winning, okay? In this scenario, it's a really tough decision right now, but it's easier to make that choice given the map, okay? There's a lot of good camping positions here. There's good camping positions here. And if the artillery is competent, they would already be rotated out of this area. Even if you can YOLO back in this area, there's almost no way that you're going to be able to finish it before they finish their side. Once this guy goes down, there's only two tanks stopping them from getting onto your cap. So maybe you stick around just sitting in this area for a brief moment to see how quickly your team pushes out this way or see if your team pulls back this way. Again, you want to try and support where your teammates are going, but keep in mind that leaving your losing flank undefended can lose you the game. All right, let's get back into the match. OK, your EBR is making the spotting run. Look at the minimap. This EBR is going to be doing this run. OK, what you need to do is I'm not really sure where you're going in this instance, but what you need to do. Is be right here, OK, this EBR is going to surf this circle and he's going to spot all kinds of stuff in this area. You have to be there to get shots. You can sit down here. But you won't have very good shots. Being up here is better. You have tons of trees that are going to protect you from being spotted. You can basically sit up here with impunity and just snipe anything that that EBR rolls in front of. OK, you definitely don't want to be pushing down this way. That's a waste of time. You need to support the play that your EBR is making. Head up this way, sit in this spot and look for damage in this area. All right. Try to take advantage of what your teammates are doing for you. So I see what you're what you're thinking. OK, no, I get it. I get what you're thinking. You're thinking I need to come over here, sweep into this area, take control of this ridge line so then I can potentially move up here. But again, this EBR, once he gets over here, he doesn't really have a ton of support. You need someone on top of the rails so that these undulating hills provide the least amount of cover for those tanks that are camping in that area. So your EBR is even pinging. Hey, guys, look for this Leo. I'm about to spot him. So he actually jumped the rails and went on your side and he didn't take damage, which leads me to think that there may not be that many people camping. Although even though you have a lot of tanks over here, they're very unhealthy. OK, so your team has split. Your TVP has identified that there's a lot of heavies moving in this way and only two slowing them down. So he's thinking I'm going to sweep into here and hopefully provide some assistance in this area. And you're kind of in between the two. So I would say you need to make a commitment. You either need to make a commitment going back or you need to push this flank very hard. OK, you can't be dithering about too much in this area. Otherwise, you give up map control on both sides. OK, so exactly what I thought might happen did actually happen. The EBRs are going to go kill your already here and then they're going to move this way and either get rear shots on these tanks, meaning that these tanks will be able to take them down even faster. Or they're just going to get out one of the two. But somebody needs to get in there and try and take down some of that damage. So the EBR is doing exactly what I thought he was going to do, and he's spotting these tanks. Again, if you were up here, you would actually have better shots, even though there is a little bit. He, he still has cover in this area. You would have better shots from up here, and even you'd be able to shoot the EBRs if they're trying to get out. So I would say maybe just a little bit different positioning here would offer you better better shots. So the TVP looks like he's being blocked by that building. So maybe if you were more to the left and up on the rails, you would still have better shots potentially on that Leo. You could have that Leo maybe within render. So it looks like your T-23 and E-100 are probably going to die pretty quick. So one EBR does go down to the E-100, which is good. They just lost RD, so you've lost the indirect fire advantage. The longer so now that your team has lost the indirect fire advantage, meaning they have two already and you have none, the longer this match goes on, the more shots their T-92s get out, the more likely they are to win. Oh, it's too bad. Oh, well, he, he died eventually. Looks like he got shot. So now you're finally up on the ridge I suggested, which is good. But now it's too late, right? Coming back here, you still got to make this move. So your team, you know, they did kind of split up here and you lost some tanks here. It looks like they're one of their T-92s wasn't that smart. He'll probably die pretty quick. But there are still in this 50B, I'm sure just hasn't been spotted. There's still a lot more tanks headed this way than there are defending your cap. 
So even though you have good shots on this Foch, it's probably smarter to... So what I would be doing in this instance is this. Let me, um, let me zoom out of here. This is what I would be doing, okay? I would be turning my hull this way, and I would actually be moving this way, okay? Stopping to take a shot and aim every time I'm loaded. And I'm, when I'm on reload, I'm going to keep moving this way. And then when I'm on reload, I'm going to keep moving this way. So I can continue to try and get damage while I'm trying to also rotate at the same time. And you might actually be getting better angles of fire on the Foch as well. That was a good shot there. He's a two shot for you now. That Leo is up top. Yeah, you want to aim a little bit more to the left on that one. The front armor on the Foch is actually surprisingly strong if you don't hit the weak spots. We had a shot on the EBR, but he's out of render. Your E100 is going to die very quickly. They are overwhelming the south. You already lost that medium that was on top of that T92, so he is still alive. Looks like the EBR might be going in to try and finish him off. Okay, so the Foch went down to the Progetto, and your guy's cap is in trouble big time. Okay, so normally when I'm in this position, my favorite thing to do is to come through here underneath and then work up this depression here. The only reason why this is a dangerous play coming down here, look on the mini map, this is a dangerous play is because these two tanks exist in this area and they could potentially have shots on you, okay? So your best bet is to probably still roll up here, although the mound that the rails are on is very steep and you're going to end up exposing your hull to get shots because you won't have enough gun depression just to expose your turret on this hull or on this uh, mound where the rails are. You need to try and extend the game as long as you can to allow your Progetto and EBR to clean up the south and get your K91 in here. This is good. We're trying to use the bushes. You can actually, you can actually shoot through these rails right down here in this area here. We're still trying to do this. There's 20 seconds. Okay, so what you need to do right now is load some of these HE rounds and just start pegging anybody that you can spot on cap. So this is a really tough match to win, but I would say it's probably actually still winnable. It's just going to be a very challenging win. There's still three on cap. You got to get a you got to get a reset. So there's two ways to get a reset. HE damage or detrack one of your opponents. And keep in mind there's an EBR behind you that you could kill. It's a really tough choice, but I would say ignore the EBR and try and get resets. Okay, this is actually pretty convenient. What you can actually do is roll up here, use your TVP's dead body as cover. It's not going to provide you perfect cover, but it's going to make your profile a little bit smaller, exposing you to the least amount of damage possible, granting you the most uh, amount of range as possible. So that 50B is on cap. It looks like the 705A has rolled off cap, so he is not a priority target. I'd be looking at the 50B or the T57. T57 just took damage. You gotta get resets. You gotta get in to get resets. Use the use the wreck to your right. You gotta look for a reset on the tanks that haven't been, been shot. The Leo or the 50B need to take damage. Ignore the 705A. You gotta get a reset if you wanna win the game. You might have enough, you might have enough time to get a reset. Ignore the 705A, there's the Leo, there's the 50B, and it's too late. So here's the thing. Before we allow the game to expire, I just want to point a couple of things out, okay? Granted, your K91 is a one-shot, but he's still alive. Your Progetto is over here. Your Progetto could possibly kill the 705A if he doesn't angle. I think the 705A is going for the K91, and if that's his choice, the Progetto might actually survive. The EBR looks like he's going to maybe sweep around this way and look for artillery or something. So here's the deal, okay? If you had gotten an HE reset on either of them, okay, that would give you plenty of time to load an AP round and kill one of them, okay? Granted, you'd have to high roll the Leopard, but if you got a kill on the 50B, if the Progetto takes down the 705A, 
this is a lot more winnable than it was moments ago because you still have tons of hit points, okay? The T57 is a one shot. The uh the Leo is a two shot, or if you high roll, you might kill him. The 50B is a one shot. This Leo is going to take three shots. And then it's just Artie, okay? This was 100% winnable, and unfortunately, you just weren't able to get the resets. I would say, had you loaded the HE round and prioritized getting a reset on these guys back here, you probably could have won this, or you, it would have been closer. It would have been a much closer match. Um, and just by looking at the numbers, it still was closer. So, Chief, I think you still played okay. If you gotten back a little bit closer, or sooner and if you had gotten these resets you probably would have given your team at least the chance to win even though some of them probably still made poor choices at least you wouldn't have lost to the reset and you still may have won this so hopefully that gives you a couple of ideas on uh in future matches what you can do but always for everybody out there that's watched this after you win a flank look at the mini map and decide can i take their base before they take mine if that's a no turn around and move back to base. If that's a yes, then keep pushing forward. All right, guys, that's it for me on this episode of Coach's Corner. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.